Soy Tararis, May May. So I won a scholarship to attend a prep school in America just when I turned 16. Uh, I'm 30 now. <laughs> <laughs> my flight landed at 10 p.m. Me and my broken English is determined to conquer the world. I walk out of the airport with two giant suitcases and found this crowd of people waving the sign UWC, the United World College. I breathe a sign of relief and had all my new schoolmates. Guided by mostly body language, we boarded the yellow school bus and journeyed from Albuquerque to Montezuma. As the bus left the terminal, I saw darkness for the very first time in my life. There in the sky hanging stars that I've never seen before. On the bus, Aya, a Japanese girl who made friends with me in the airport, sat next to me. We were not able to communicate with any language, but we were able to find songs, Japanese country songs to sing together in the same tune. <laughs> Furthermore, we wrote Chinese characters to communicate. Apparently, that the same ancient form of Japanese character looks the same. School was never dull. A little school of 200 kids filled with 72 nationalities of kids. There was no dawn in the culture, no norm, no one was ever offended or deemed too strange. My friends from the Middle East always challenged me in sumo wrestling, even though I protested. Sumo happens in Japan, not <laughs> Hong Kong. <laughs> Still, they showed me a blue face and I gave it a try. The Italians like to throw pasta on the kitchen wall <laughs> to test whether it's on the <laughs> LA and he sent me a cat package. Inside this was rice, cheap ramen, dried cuttlefish, and a gi giant box of Morton salt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tried to make the best of the situation. At least there was dried cuttlefish. <laughs> it's a delicacy at home. There are these flattened baby squid that looks like cardboard cutout of squids. <laughs> the best way to eat them is to choose them on the little charcoal stove. I went around the school and couldn't find any charcoal, and then circled around the dorm kitchen, and then something caught my eyes. A toaster. Oh, I decided that toaster would suffice. Oh, it worked. Oh, After being away from home for five months, the aroma of cuttlefish with uh, charcoal was better than I remembered. I waited patiently until every one of them was already toasted. Suddenly, a crowd gathered outside the courtyard. And they were grumbling about a stitch. The crowd grew bigger, and more and more people joined the quest to hunt down the awful smell. And they busted into the kitchen, inspected my cuttlefish, and determined that I was the culprit of this god awful smell. And I was forever branded as a Chinese girl that put rotten fish in the toaster. <laughs> marketing firm upon graduation. Growing up in one of the biggest financial markets in the world, I saw people running around in bright jackets on the trading floor in financial news every evening. I thought it would be a whole lot of fun doing that. <laughs> standing in a sea of men in colorful team jackets. On the rotation in Chicago Board of Options Exchange, you even get to stand on top of the railing and yell on top of your lungs and do these cryptic hand signals. <laughs> and at the end of the day, you just hope upon hope that this trader will just stay and not go right away and tell you a little bit of the secrets. Having recently graduated from probably the most liberal university in America, I was shell-shocked. At the university, I was a leader. I was a chairperson of the Chinese Students Association and the editor-in-chief of the Diplomat newspaper and a Freeman scholar. I was at the forefront of a movement that promotes global village. Freeman sexuality is embraced and celebrated as equal with men. At the end of four years, I was convinced the world has progressed to where love and peace rule 
while women can be kings as well as men. Being a clerk at the options exchange was a violent wake-up call. This new reality was me crawling at the lowest of the totem pole, under the sea of men, cursing, chewing tobacco, spitting everywhere, reading pornography, <laughs> and unleashing the fury at me whenever they want to. There was really a girl who worked as a trainer. Almost all the girls there were lifetime clerks, delivering training clocks from place to place. They were paid according to how beautiful they looked, and the most beautiful of them were going to get to bring home $2,000 a week. I couldn't help but think all of the people there thought I will also not promote and just be a glorified delivery girl. The feminists in me just couldn't stand the connotation. As I thought things couldn't get worse, I saw a clerk going around every broker and trader, showing all of her new moves. <laughs> and her boss bought her. She even let them squeeze. <laughs> Sometime went by, things were not going so well. I had no confidence that I could make it as a trader. Yet I kept showing up every morning at 5.30 to work, until one day, a not so busy day, one of the brokers was looking for something smart to say, and he hollered at me. Hey, you. So I turned around and said, yeah. She was pleased with my knowledge and shouted, you see my cousin over there? He'll back you in the back, and I'll back you in the front. A roar of laughter ensued. I had no idea what it meant. I really didn't. What could be so funny? Does he mean that he'll back me like he would help me out? I smiled and ran out the pit. It took me a whole night to figure out what he really meant. But I wanted to punch him. I wanted to punch everyone. I only thought of, they only thought of me as some object of no consequence. However, I had no choice. I had nowhere to go. I know family here in America. Whenever I called my grandmother and told her, I was doing well. And magically, every month, I was getting some sort of raise or promotion. <laughs> Of course, I would never dare to tell her about the mess I was in and the possibility of getting fired, which meant to be deported and sent home. In the midst of this, I met an Indonesian art vendor. He was kind and welcoming. He was everything I needed. He was the solution to my failure. I was convinced that I loved him. I agreed to marry this man twice my age, even though my 23-year-old self was com a complete mess and could not tell up from down. I told my family the good news that I was, I was moving to Santa Fe, but I killed two birds with one stone. I didn't have to tell them about my failure, and I get to get married before 25. In Hong Kong, that's the age of spinster. <laughs> <laughs> I love Hong Kong. I would really be happy to live there with my family. However, having to tell the truth if I were to go home was too much to bear. I quit my job and was sitting in my room, dragging my feet about packing up with Santa Fe. I got a text from my friend, Mary Bell, from the Mercantile Exchange about this party her boss was throwing. I rarely went to those parties. However, that time around, I had nothing better to do than to get wasted on some booze or perhaps score some contrabands. Might as well go on a big bang. 11 p.m., I walk up the stairs to the second floor of this typical Chicago 3 flat. The party was in full motion. The air was smelled with beer and smoke. I dragged my awkward self through the crowd in search of the wet bar. It was very hard for me to carry a ca casual conversation with parties. My knowledge of American music, TV shows, were limited. I understood no references. I do not know any sports team and don't support any of them. I have nothing in common with these people, except maybe if I get wasted. Then I have something called. <laughs> so I downed a couple of screwdrivers quickly, and still I don't see anybody that I'm familiar with, so I pretended to keep myself busy by going to the bathroom. When I came out, it was just as awkward as ever. I stood next to the table with the drinks, and finally somebody was willing to chat with me. I got to engage in a conversation, mostly just him babbling about how excited he was, setting up a new firm, and they were looking for a couple of clerks. I took the job, and the rest was history. That was my second chance for a new life. God probably was so disgusted with my plan of throwing my life away to save face. I worked harder than anybody else could. I ate, slept, drank, only trading. No, I could not fail. I became a trader in six months. Even after I got my badge, 
a student with pain as a trainer, I still got people after people challenging me for my spots, for my legitimacy of existence. Guess what? I fought them all. <laughs> <laughs> no one could ever take that away from me. And that's what immigrants do. We are forced to survive, or else you have to go home and tell your grandmother the, the tales of your failure. 